Turn, if you will, be turning to the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 1. be back in the house of the Lord and I ask you to whisper a prayer for us as we try to uh, read God's word and uh, try to make a few comments on it but in chapter 2 of the book of Romans Paul is writing to the church there and uh, he's he's telling them their condition and he's telling us our condition and uh, the thing that I would uh, like to really stress this morning is that here here he says in verse one thou art inexcusable mm -hmm. and this morning inexcusable means that you have no excuse whatsoever for not serving the Lord uh, if you're saved uh, and you, you you should have that desire and uh, I, I know so many times that I fail the Lord and uh, it's it's my fault and uh, I have to come to him and ask him to forgive me but all in all when we sum it all up he is the just one he is the great one he is Amen. the one that knows all and we are his servants and you read all through the, the scriptures about the servants and the master was over them and they did what he said do and this morning it's our it's our uh position that we are a servant and that we should do and, and and obey him and whatever whatever he leads us into amen and how that we should act towards our brothers and sisters so in verse one of chapter two of the book of romans he says thou therefore thou art inexcusable O man Whosoever thou, thou art that judges, thou that judges another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges doeth the same thing. Now, what is he saying here this morning? He's saying that we do the same thing that we criticize other people for doing. Right. Now, notice, I, and you can hold your place right there, but over in the third chapter, uh, in the in the verse 23 what he says here's the reason he can say it the bible says in verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god amen being justified free by this grace through the redemption that is in jesus christ so this morning we have this redemption uh through jesus christ and we are inexcusable because we have sinned yet we should try to fight that thing with our all might and and and, and cause this body to uh, walk in an upright way uh, towards the lord but he says we're 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 we have sinned and we we, we are sinful mm -hmm. and but he said we're inexcusable and so this morning he's talking about sinning because he's talking about judging another person and that's not our place to judge another person we can we can try to encourage the person and still not criticize him if we see him doing a fault we can go to him and try to encourage him but we don't need to to run uh, uh, something down his throat and, and make a gag on it because that we see it because listen it might not be the same thing that we do that he's done but we're sinners right and it all comes under one thing and that's sin and so he says here this morning he says in verse 2 but we are but we are sure in verse uh, 2 2 but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things so this morning it's not our place Paul saying to judge another person because here he said we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things and this morning if if we do if we try to get in God's place then we will we're going to receive some things from the Lord because we're doing these things that uh, that we're not 
uh, uh, capable of doing. And he said here, O art or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Now, when we when we do these things, we have not the ability to forgive that person uh, or that he's doing this sin and we've not got the right to judge him and so he says here are you uh, are you despising uh, God's goodness and his graciousness and his forgiveness he says here uh, in, uh, in verse 3 and thinkest thou this old man that judgest them which do such things and doeth the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Amen. No, we won't. And, now, right. and the judgment this morning is that God will, God will, we will stand before the, the throne of God one day and we're going to hear of all the things. If we're saved, we're going to stand at the judgment of God and we're going to, uh, the, the uh, white, uh, not the white throne, but the judgment of God. And we're going to hear the things that we have done in this flesh that's wrong and we're going to we're going to be reminded of these things and listen people we're going to lose out on a lot of things that we could enjoy uh, doing even in heaven with the crowns and the and the rewards that that will will be given to us for serving the Lord and and the the greatest thing of it all is that we can show our appreciations to the Lord Jesus Christ and to God with these rewards first of all by receiving them and then turning around and giving them to the one that is that is best suited for these rewards because listen if it wasn't for the lord jesus christ and for god we would not exist we would not be able to have the opportunity to be with him in heaven we Amen. wouldn't be receiving these rewards and we certainly couldn't give them away and this morning there shouldn't be anything more uh, uh, uh happier in your life than to give rewards or give honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ because listen he is all in all he is the one that created us he is the one that loved us he is the one that sent his son Jesus Christ to prevent us from being in a devil's hell Amen. and so this morning there's none no greater and there shouldn't be any one greater in your life uh and, and that it and to honor him and glorify him and and listen we just cannot do it enough that's just like these songs that we've been singing this morning listen that that gives him praise that gives him honor and gives him glory and i enjoy and i get a blessing out of, of, of speaking those words out of my mouth and saying them because i know that they're true and I know, that, I know that it's pleasing to God and I know it's pleasing to Jesus Christ to hear these and so this morning here we said he said here uh, in, in verse uh, verse 3 and thankest thou this O man that judgest them which do such things and doeth the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long-suffering not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And so, when, do we do we do we do we get to the point where that that we despise the things that God has done for us and for our loved ones? And that's what He's saying here. He thinkest thou that uh, that, uh, that just in verse four, or despisest thou the riches of His goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Now that's what he did for me, and that's what he did for you, and that's what he does for all those that that are saved that call upon his name. And listen, he he even he even does that to those that will never know him as their savior. Mm -hmm. He 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 still he still loves them, but listen, he he does that for us in a special way. And he said here uh, uh, in uh, verse five. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, or uh, uh, an impenitent heart is uh, not sorry, uh, treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. And so 
do we do we do we have these things in our in our soul in our, in our heart and within us listen that's something that we need to we need to we need to try, do checking on and and try to clear it up if, if there's things there we need to come to god with us with a with a with a sorrowful heart and ask forgiveness of these things because uh, a lot of times you know these things uh if the devil can keep you from realizing them, he'll let them get by you and you don't know it. But listen, when we do these things, uh, it's, it's a terrible thought to, to, to have these thoughts against the Lord of, of, of heaven and the God of, of, of heaven. And so this is this, this thing of an impenitent heart. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not sorry. You're, you're not sorry that you're doing these things. So here... I want you to see this in verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? And this is God, and he will render to you your needs. To them who by patience continually continue in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath here's what happens tribulations and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the jews first and also the gentiles but glory honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the jew first and also to the gentiles so this this morning this is something that we can have we can enjoy and and in this when he says but glory honor and peace to every man that worketh good and this morning we should we should have a desire within our hearts this morning to have this honor and this glory and peace especially Amen. Peace in our hearts because that we feel like and we 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 get we don't get no condemnation from the things that we're doing and so, for there is, in verse 11, for there is no respect of person with God. Amen. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall, shall be judged by the law. Of course, that's covering the Jew and the Gentile. For not the hearer of the law are just before God, but the doer of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are a law unto themselves. And I know that's, if you don't watch it, it'll go around in circles with you. But uh, here, uh, which show the works of the law written in their heart, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the means while accusing uh, accusing or else executing one another so here's what what they boil down to in in this he says we are unexcusable and i want to i want to if you would i want you to turn this with me this morning to second corinthians and we will read just a little bit more in second corinthians 12. i have no scripture here too i don't have to read for you <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1. <clears throat> it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come or tell to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Mm -hmm. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And this was this was a this was a thing that happened to Paul. And uh, uh, I'm not for sure. Uh, really, he was he was he was killed and drug out of the city, uh, or whether it happened on the road to Damascus or or wherever. But this thing happened to him. And and uh, he said, and I knew such a man, in verse 3, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. And so Paul 
had this experience, he was caught up to the third heaven where that Christ sitteth on the throne with God. And he saw these, all of these things. And notice here in verse 4, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. And so what he heard, he never did tell him. He never did tell nobody exactly what he heard, but he heard these things, and he he wanted everybody to know what, that he had been there and that he had suffered these things, and he, and that he had been rewarded with this. And he says here in verse uh, five, of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Now. Again, Paul is bringing out how that he is inexcusable, how that uh, uh, he uh, uh, cannot boast of himself, how that, that, but he says this, I will boast of my Savior, Jesus Christ, and of God. He says here, uh, he says uh, in verse uh, of five, he says, of such a one will I glory, talking about the God of heaven, Yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. And so what he's saying is, this, these infirmities that he had, and it was more than one because it's plural. And you know when he was in the, on the road to Damascus, and he was, that he, and the Lord spoke to him there, how that his eyes were affected, and he was blind for a while and couldn't see. But yet. All of these other things, and you you can find out what all the other things that that he went through. He says, he says, I'm gonna glory in them. Now listen, if we if Paul could do that, if Paul had was close enough to the Lord to do those things, then it's it's certainly possible for us to do the same thing. Right. Because he was the same flesh as we are. Uh, he might have been called of God. And we've been called to God, and so listen, we can, we can enjoy, we can rejoice in the old aches and pains, and the the aches and pains and the things of this body. And he says here in verse six, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. Now he's saying this morning, and I'm I, I understand it more and more all the time that I cannot glory in this body of mine because it's sinful it's, and, and I cannot go around bragging and saying, well, I've, I've done this and I've done that for the Lord and I've done this because, listen, the only thing that I can glory in is what God has done for me. Amen. What the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me. I can glory in that. I can say God has touched my body. God has healed my body. And the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for my sins and my soul has been saved. And I am uh, on my way to heaven. Amen. I can, I can glory in that, and I can I can brag on that. But he says here uh, in verse uh, six, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he, he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. That's when he was, this is when he was up there in the third heaven. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, when I, I was thinking about this, you know, you remember... Uh, Job, and of course, this is the same. This is the same man that went before uh, the same spirit that went before God and accused God of putting a fence around Job. Now, this same guy here, this same evil spirit, this same Satan, this Lucifer, has done the same thing with Paul. No doubt in my mind, he had to because God let it happen. God gave the devil the, the, uh, 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 the authority to do so much to Paul and, 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 uh, and he, told, he told 
the devil, when he was talking to him about Job, he said, you can have all he's got, you can t do anything you want to, but his life you cannot have, it's mine. And this is the same way with Paul. You read all of the things that Paul went through, how that he was beaten and drug out of the city, how that he was stoned so many times, how that all these persecutions was on him. Listen, the devil got permission to do this. But the thing of it is, Paul come out on top. Mm -hmm. And notice, and he says uh, here, lest I should be exalted above measure, and, and he, you know, though the abundance of, through the abundance of the revelation that was given me as a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I sought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient Amen. for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, Amen. if if we could understand it, if we can make this, if we can make this flesh understand it, which is sinful and it fights it and it don't want to, it don't want to listen to it. But listen, even in our infirmities, even in our aches and pains, that we can rejoice in it. Listen, we have to have this. We've got to have this. This, I, this knowledge that the aches and the pains, if we can rejoice in them, that Jesus or God allowed the devil to put into this old flesh, we're defeating the devil. Now people, I'm telling you, we need to, we need to, we need to not criticize the Lord Jesus Christ or God or think, think well, he's, he's causing me to do this, he's coming, listen, it's for your best because here he said, I glory in it. I mm -hmm. glory in these old, old aches and pains. And so here, this is this is what uh, he, he said. I, I asked the Lord, I prayed to the Lord three times that he would remove it. And he wouldn't do it. Now, why wouldn't he do it? Because he says, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Amen. And my, His grace is sufficient for me. And His grace is sufficient for you. And if, 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 you'll, if you'll fight off that devil, if you'll try to, to continue praying unto the Lord and ask His leadership in this thing, you can understand what you're going through. You can understand, listen, it's the best for me this way because this way, I stay closer to the Lord. If I had a if I had a, a 160 pound body right now with muscles all over and I could run 100 miles an hour, listen, I wouldn't have to go to the Lord every night and say, I, I need your help again. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And listen, if I had everything that this world holds for me, hey, I, it would be doubtful if I would have ever been saved because listen, I wouldn't have no need for nothing. And uh, the world makes this flesh happy. And uh, as long as this flesh is happy, listen, uh, 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 it, uh, it, 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 can, it plumb puts the spirit down and the spirit wouldn't have on it. So this is why Paul, this is, what, this is what he said to him. So in verse, the bottom part of verse nine, most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. And what was that power? Well, he was letting Paul suffer for the, for the sake of God and for the sake of Christ and to, to, to exalt them in, in this thing because, listen, the devil uh, had got permission and, and, and he was causing Paul all these aches and pains. And Paul was letting drunk. And Paul, Paul he, he just kept going. Now, most gladly, therefore, uh, no, I'm saying. In verse 10, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. Amen. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And so here is all of these things that Paul went through. These are some of all the things, and all the things that that the old devil just kept on gouging just like he did Job. 
and, 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 and all, but you see, Job, when it was all over with, he wound up with more than, twice more than he ever had. He wound up with a bigger family than he ever had, and he was closer to the Lord. Amen. And, and it was because of his infirmities. And so this morning, when, when, uh, when we get these old aches and pains and all this, just say, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, and that sounds stupid. It sounds stupid, but listen, it's pleasing to the Lord. It's pleasing to the Lord that you honor Him with your aches and pains. It's pleasing to the Lord that you recognize Him as your God and your Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, here again, He says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And he said, I take pleasure in them. And, and then in verse 11, he says, I am become a fool in glory. And I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. And Paul just, just bragging on himself a little bit and he deserved to because of all that he had done for those people and all that, that had happened and, and they still they still wouldn't listen to him. And and I wanted to read one more thing to you, if I can find it right quick. Yeah, and it's in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10. I want to read this to you and I, I, I've uh, said it a few times but I want to read it again. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 with this. Therefore hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that, that ye are able, but will with the temptation. Now notice, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it wherefore my dearly beloved flee from idolatry and i speak as to a wise man judge ye what i say mm -hmm. and so that's god's word he says hey when them temptations and when them old aches and pains and when all these things come on you he says i'll be with you and i'll make a way through those things and and through that through that temptation through that ache and pain he says i'll get the glory and you'll get the blessing so that's our that's our uh lesson for today uh i hope that it's i hope that it's been a help to you in some way uh i know that uh i i got a blessing from trying to study the lesson and uh i, I know this i seen i see that i'm inexcusable for any of the things that Thank you all for listening and uh, pray for me. Amen.